Hi, I'm Kevin Dunn, the Elliott Professor of Chemistry at Hampton Sydney College, and today I'm going to share with you the, one of the HSCG's favorite routines, the allegory of nerds and cheerleaders. At high school cafeterias all across the known universe, nerds and cheerleaders are having lunch, but they never sit together. It's puzzle. Why don't the nerds and the cheerleaders sit together? You might think that cheerleaders hate nerds, but that's not true. And you might think that nerds hate cheerleaders, but that's definitely not true. I was a nerd, and I love cheerleaders. Some would say I still am a nerd, and I hang out with cheerleaders all the time. Nevertheless, they never sit together. Why is that? The reason is very simple. Imagine a table of cheerleaders in the high school cafeteria, and there's an empty seat. A nerd comes up and sits down. The police don't come and get him. Nobody escorts him out. The cheerleaders don't treat him bad in any way. But every cheerleader at the table can't help thinking, could have been another cheerleader sitting there. And that's enough, because the nerd feels that vague animosity. And so you might wonder then, why do the nerds all sit together? Because the nerds obviously like the cheerleaders. Why do the nerds sit together? The answer is also very simple, no place left to sit. So the cheerleaders all sit together, the nerds all sit together. You may wonder why am I hearing about nerds and cheerleaders uh, as a favorite routine of soap makers. The reason is because the allegory works for soap and water. In my first slide, I have an image of an oil molecule on top and water molecules down below. And the color coding scheme that I've devised is that red is negatively charged, white is positively charged, but green is neutral, it's neither positive nor negative. So the oil molecule is very green, the water molecules are red and white. Opposite charges attract one another, so red atoms are attracted to white atoms, white atoms are attracted to red atoms, just as cheerleaders are attractive to one another. The oil molecule has no red part and no white part. It's neither negative nor positive, and so it is not strongly attracted to the red and white water molecules. The next slide shows the kind of an oil molecule that we might find in, an, in a vegetable oil or an animal fat, the kinds of molecules that we use for making soap. This is glycerol trilorate. It's the kind of an oil molecule that you'd find, for example, in coconut oil or palm kernel oil. It has a peculiar structure. It has three long fingers on it, and the three fingers are connected in a knuckle. Each of those fingers is a fatty acid. One, two, three, connected at the knuckle, which is a glycerin. So I've got a triacyl glyceride. Triacyl means three acids, one glycerin. You'll notice that it's colored almost exclusively green, which means it's not particularly attractive to water molecules that are colored red or white, that have positive and negative charges. But if you look down in the center, there are three white atoms. Three white atoms are gonna be attractive to red atoms like the oxygen atoms in water molecules. This is what sodium hydroxide looks like. There's a water molecule on the, on the left and a sodium hydroxide molecule on the right. And you'll notice they look very similar. They're almost identical. They consist of two white atoms and a red atom. For water molecule, the two white atoms are hydrogen. The red atom is oxygen. For sodium hydroxide, the white atom that's kind of detached from the other two is a sodium ion, and the OH is represented by one red oxygen and one red hydrogen. We're now going to explore saponification. I start with my glycerol trilorate molecule in the center, and I, I have three hydroxide ions floating around next to it. Each of the hydroxide ions is colored red, Red atoms are attracted to white atoms, and there are three white atoms right at the center of my glycerol trilorate molecule. So one of them is going to attack, bink, there it went, makes a noise, bink, bink, and one of the fingers was, ah, amputated. And there it is, floating off with two big red eyes like a caterpillar, two big, giant, juicy red oxygen atoms with a nice negative charge at one end. What's left behind is a diacyl glyceride, it's only got two, two acid groups still connected to the glycerin, and I've got two more hydroxide ions. The second one is going to move in for the attack. 
Dink, there it went. I now have a second finger amputated. And finally, the third one comes in. Dink, and now I've finished. Three hydroxides came in. They attacked the three uh, white atoms in the center of the glycerol trilorate molecule. They amputated the three fingers on the molecule. Each of those fingers is now a soap molecule. And what's left behind, where the knuckle used to be, is a glycerin molecule. We now see a close-up of one of those fingers. That's a soap molecule. This particular soap molecule is sodium laurate. Um, you see the sodium ion off to the left. You see two big red oxygen atoms at the left end of the soap molecule. And you see a big green tail on it, which is neither red nor white, and so not particularly attracted to water molecules. You now have what amounts to a nerd cheerleader Siamese twin. One of the Siamese twins is nerdy and not very attracted to water molecules, and the other is like a cheerleader, maybe the captain of the football team. Water molecules love this end of the molecule, and they don't so much love the other end of the molecule. If you, if you add acid to this soap molecule, it will turn into a fatty acid. This particular one is lauric acid. I'll go back and forth. Lauric acid, sodium laurate. Lauric acid, sodium laurate. They're very similar. The difference is whether there's a hydrogen attached to the two red oxygen atoms or whether it's a sodium ion. There are lots of different fatty acids. Soap makers use probably a dozen of them, but there are even more. Here are three of them. Lauric acid, palmitic acid, and stearic acid. You can see they have the same shape. They're red and white at one end. They're green and long and greasy at the other end. And they only differ by the length. Lauric acid has 12 carbon atoms in it. Palmitic acid has 16, and stearic acid has 18. Now we get to soap and water. Now we have some cheerleaders that have wandered up to our Siamese twin of a nerd and a cheerleader, and they've muscled off the sodium ion to the side, and we see uh, on the right a bunch of water molecules, like a little harem of water molecules, surrounding our sodium ion. What's left behind on the left-hand side is the soap molecule with its two big red juicy oxygen atoms, and a long green tail which is not much attracted to water molecules. If I have more than one soap molecule, the nerdy ends will all congregate together and the watery ends will also congregate together. So two soap molecules would arrange themselves like this, tail to tail, with the greasy ends next to each other and the watery ends on the outside. As I add more and more water molecules, they circle like wagons in a wagon train and go into a sphere, and now I have a big sphere where all the, all the great gray green greasy hydrocarbon tails are pointing toward the center, and then all the nice big red and white juicy oxygen and hydrogen atoms are on the outside. I now have a ball that's watery on the outside and greasy on the inside. This is called a micelle, and it's the way that soap does its business. If this micelle were floating around in your sink, all of the grease and fat and oil from your dishwater would congregate in the great gray-green greasy center of that nice soap micelle, and they would be surrounded by water molecules, which would carry it down the drain. I hope you enjoyed the allegory of nerds and cheerleaders. If you'd like to know more about soap chemistry, you can find it in my book, Scientific Soap Making, and I encourage you to check out my other videos.